VLAN Trunking Protocol or VTP. VLAN Trunking Protocol is a Cisco proprietary messaging protocol used by Cisco switches to exchange VLAN information. VTP synchronizes VLAN information such as VLAN ID or VLAN name with switches inside the same VTP domain which greatly simplifies network administration. A VTP domain is simply a set of trunk switches with the matching VTP settings that are domain name, password and VTP version. All switches inside the same VTP domain share their VLAN information with each other. To better understand the benefit of using VTP in your network, consider an example where a network with 100 switches. Without VTP to create a VLAN on each switch, you would have to manually enter the VLAN creation command on each switch. VTP enables you to create the VLAN only on a single switch. That switch can then propagate information about the VLAN to each switch in the same VTP domain and cause other switches to create that VLAN too. Likewise, if you want to delete a VLAN, you only need to delete it on a single switch and the change is automatically propagated to every other switch inside the same VTP domain. The following network topology explains the concept more thoroughly. In the picture, you can see a network of three switches. We have created a new VLAN on switch 1. Switch 1 sends a VTP update on switch 2, which in turn sends its VTP update to switch 3. Now all three switches have the same VLAN created. Please note, VLAN trunking protocol is somewhat confusingly named since it doesn't provide any VLAN trunking capabilities. Remember that VTP isn't used for trunking protocols such as 802.1Q and ISL enabled trunking. VTP modes. Each Cisco switch can operate in one of the three VTP modes. The first one is VTP server mode, a default mode for Cisco switches. A switch operating in this mode can create, modify and delete VLANs. You can also specify other VTP configuration parameters on a VTP server such as VTP version and VTP pruning for the entire VTP domain. A VTP server switch will propagate VLAN changes. To configure a switch as a VTP server, use the VTP mode server global configuration command. The second is VTP client mode. A switch operating in this mode can't change its VLAN configuration. You cannot create, change or delete VLANs on a VTP client. Received VTP updates will be processed and forward. To configure a switch as a VTP server, use the VTP mode client global configuration command. The third one is VTP transparent mode. A switch operating in this mode doesn't participate in VTP. A VTP transparent switch does not advertise its VLAN configuration and does not synchronize its VLAN configuration based on received advertisements, but it does forward the received VTP advertisement. You can create and delete VLANs on a VTP transparent switch, but the changes will not be sent to other switches. To configure a switch to use VTP transparent mode, Use the VTP mode transparent global configuration command. VTP configuration. With VTP, it is possible to make configuration changes centrally on one or more switches and have those changes automatically advertised to all other switches in the same VTP domain. In a typical LAN, some switches are configured as VTP servers and other switches are configured as VTP client. A VLAN created on a VTP server switch is automatically advertised to all switches inside the same VTP domain. To exchange VTP messages, the following requirements must be met. A switch has to be configured as either a VTP server or a VTP client. VTP domain name has to be same on both switches. VTP versions have to match. If present, VTP domain password has to be same. And finally, the link between the switches has to be configured as a trunk link. Consider the following example. We have a network of three switches connected via trunk link. On switch 1, we will configure the VTP domain name using the VTP domain name command and VTP password using the VTP password command. The default VTP mode on Cisco switches is the server mode, so the command VTP mode server wasn't needed in the switch 1 configuration. Now we need to configure switch 2 and switch 3 as VTP client. We can do this by the following set of command. 
The configuration on switch 3 looks similar to that of switch 2. Now when we create a new VLAN, that is VLAN 30 on switch 1, the VTP update should be sent to switch 2 and switch 3. The new VLAN should be created automatically on switch 2 and switch 3. On switch 1, we will create a new VLAN by the command VLAN 30. Switch 2 and switch 3 will create the VLAN 30 automatically. We can use the show VLAN command on both switches to verify this. To display VTP configuration information, you can use the show VTP command. ACL or access control list. An access control list is a set of rules that is usually used to filter network traffic. ACL can be configured on network devices with packet filtering capabilities such as routers and firewall. ACLs contains a list of conditions that categorize packets and help you determine when to allow or deny network traffic. They are applied on the interface basis to packets leaving or entering an interface. There are two types of ACL available on Cisco switches. First one is standard access list. This allows you to evaluate only the source IP address of a packet. Standard ACLs are not as powerful as extended ACLs, but they are less CPU intensive for the device. Second one is extended access list. This allows you to evaluate the source and destination IP, the type of layer 3 protocol, source and destination port and other parameter. Extended ACLs are more complex to configure and require more CPU time than standard ACL, but they allow more granular level of control. To understand the benefit of using ACLs in your network, consider the following network topology. Let's say that server holds some important document that needs to be available only to the administrator. We can configure an access list on router R1 to enable access to server only for the administrator's workstation. Any other traffic going to the server will be blocked. This way we can ensure that only authorized user can access sensitive files on the server. Please note, ACLs are not used exclusively for packet filtering. They are also used to match packets for network address translation that is NAT to match packets to make quality of service decisions and other purposes. Standard access control list. Standard access control list allow you to evaluate only the source IP address of a packet. Standard ACLs are not as powerful as extended ACL and can't distinguish between the types of IP traffic, but they are less CPU intensive for the device. Before configuring the standard ACLs, here are a few things to have in mind when working with ACL, both standard and extended. ACLs can contain multiple statements. The packet is always compared with each line of the access list in sequential order. It starts with the first line of the access list, moves on to the second line, then third, and so on. The packet is compared with lines of the access list only until a match is made. Once the condition is met, the packet is acted upon and no further comparisons takes place. There is an implicit deny all at the end of each access list. This means that if a packet does not match the condition on any of the lines in the access list, the packet will be discarded. ACLs need to be applied to an interface on the device where you want to where you want the traffic to be filtered. You must also specify which direction of traffic you want the access list to be applied to. Two directions are available. Inbound, ACL is applied to the traffic coming into the interface. Second one is outbound, the ACL is applied to the traffic leaving the interface. To create a standard access list, the following command is used in the router's global configuration mode. That is access list, ACL number, permit or deny, IP address, and the wildcard mask. The ACL number for the standard access list has to be between 1 to 99 and from 1300 to 1999. You can also use the host keyword to specify the host you want to permit or deny. That is access list, ACL number, permit or deny, host, IP address. Once the access list is created, it needs to be applied to an interface. 
you can do that by using the IP access group ACL number in or out interface subcommand. The in keyword specifies that the ACL will be applied to the traffic coming into the interface while the out keyword specifies that the ACL will be applied to the traffic leaving the interface. Let's now configure a standard ACL. Consider the following network topology. Server 192.168.0.5 slash 24 holds some important documents that needs to be available only to the administrator who is at an IP address of 10.0.0.5 slash 24. We can configure an access list on R1 to enable access to server only for the administrator's workstation. Any other traffic going to the server should be blocked. First, we need to allow traffic from the administrator's workstation to the server. We can use the following command. Access list 1 permit 10.0.0.5 and the wildcard mask will be 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. The command permits traffic from the administrator's IP address. We will deny access to the user with the IP address of 172.16.0.1 using the command access list 1 deny 172.16.0.10 and the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0. Next, we need to apply the access list to an interface. It is recommended to place the standard access list as close to the destination as possible. In our case, this is the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface on router R1. Since we want to evaluate all packets trying to exit the interface, we will specify the outbound direction. Login into the interface and then use this command that is IP access group 1 out. The command will force the router to evaluate all packets trying to exit out the interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. If the administrator tries to access the server, the traffic will be allowed because of the first statement. However, if user tries to access the server, the traffic will be forbidden because of the second ACL statement. Remember the standard ACLs evaluate only the source IP address of a packet. At the end of each ACL, there is an implicit deny all statement. That means that all traffic not specified in the ACL statements will be forbidden. Extended access control list. In extended access control list, you can evaluate the source and destination IP address, the type of the layer three protocol, source and destination port and other parameter. Extended access lists are harder to configure and require more processor time than the standard access list, but they enable a much more granular level of control. Two steps are required to configure extended ACL. First one is configure an extended ACL using the following command that is access list ACL number permit or deny protocol source address wildcard mask destination address and the wildcard mask. The second step is Apply an access list to an interface using the following command IP access group ACL number in or out. Extended access list numbers are in range from 100 to 199 and from 2000 to 2699. To better understand the usefulness of extended ACLs, consider the following example. We want to enable the administrator's workstation that is 10.0.0.1/24 unrestricted access to the server 192.168.0.1/24. We will also deny any type of access to the user's workstation 10.0.0.2/24. First, we will create a statement that will permit the administrator's workstation access to server that is access list 100 permit IP 10.0.0.1 with the wildcard mask and the destination IP address as 192.168.0.1. Now we need to create a statement that will deny the user's workstation access to the server. That is access list 100 deny IP 10.0.0.2 with the wildcard mask and this destination address as 192.168.0.1 and the wildcard mask. Lastly, we need to apply the access list on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 with the IP access group of 100 in 